Hello, my name is Justine Bowling. I'm an intern at Blue Ocean Society for Marine Conservation. Welcome back to our weekly theme program. This week we are talking about tide pools. So first of all, what are tides? Tides are the rising and falling of the ocean surface. And believe it or not, tides are caused by the moon. So how this works is the moon's gravitational pull pulls the water on, or on Earth towards the moon. So the sides of the Earth that are closest and farthest from the moon experience high tide, whereas the sides that are perpendicular to the moon experience low tide. As the moon orbits the Earth, it pulls the water with it, which is how different places on Earth experience tides at different times of the day. Um, and that's how the high tide and the low tide change. So when the water rises, it is high tide, and when the water falls, it is low tide. There are usually two high tides and two low tides every day. So tide pools are puddles in the rocks where the water collects when the water um, falls during low tide. So as the rocks become exposed to the air, the water collects in those rocks. Um, tide pools contain salt water as well as many animals and plants. There are many challenges to tide pools, um, one of which is sunlight. So sunlight hits the tide pools and warms the water. It also dries up the tide pools, which is not good for the animals or the plants living in them as they need water to survive. Rain is another challenge as it causes a disturbance to the tide pool. Waves also cause a disturbance to the tide pool, but they also pose the additional risk of carrying the animals out to sea, uh, which is not good for the animals as they rely on the extra protection that the tide pool provides. Trash and litter are always a challenge to marine environments, but especially small environments like tide pools, which is why you always want to pick up your trash and your litter and, and not leave it on the beach, um, which would harm the animals in the ocean. Birds are also a challenge to tide pools as they do come in and eat the animals out of the tide pools, which is good for the birds, but not very good for the animals that are being eaten. So what might you find in a tide pool? First of all, tide pool plants. They provide food and shelter for the animals living in the tide pools. These plants include Irish sea moss, kelp, rockweed, these plants are often completely covering the rocks of the tide pools, which makes the rocks very slippery, which is why you need to be very careful when you're tide pooling. Tide pool animals, on the other hand, well, there are a lot of them, a lot of different kinds. Many of them are invertebrates. So invertebrates are animals that do not have backbones and oftentimes don't have bones at all. A lot of these animals, because they're vulnerable without bones, have hard outer shells. Um, for protection. These are animals such as crabs, lobsters, clams. Um, their outer shell protects them against other animals that might eat them. Some of these animals include barnacles. So barnacles live in tide pools. They're very small and they stick to the rocks and the other surfaces in the tide pools. Um, they stick to the rocks with a very strong natural glue. It is one of the strongest natural glues that we know of, which I think is very cool. Um, barnacles don't seem to move that much, but when the water rises and, and um, they become underwater, they actually move more. That is when they feed and that's when they interact with other animals. Snails also similarly stick to rocks and other surfaces in tide pools. Not quite as strongly though. Um, they're kind of like slugs with shells. You've probably seen them before, um, and if you go tide pooling, you will see a lot. Uh, they are very common in tide pools. Next, we have clams. Clams are also pretty common in tide pools, but they like to bury themselves in the sand, so they're pretty hard to find usually. Um, they kind of look like two shells stuck together, but there is an animal inside of those shells. Next, we have crabs. Um, crabs like to hide under the rocks but once you find them, they move very quickly. Um, they have hard outer shells like a lot of the other animals. Uh, that does protect them. Um, they, they walk sideways, which is kind of funny. Um, and they, they do move very quickly, so they are pretty easy to spot when you are tide pooling. Next, we have sea urchins. Uh, they look like spiky balls, but believe it or not, they are animals. Um, they also stick to the rocks and the other surfaces in the tide pools like the other animals do as well. Lastly, we have sea slugs. 
um, also called nudibranchs. They are very colorful. Um, they're pretty hard to find in tide pools, but personally I think it's worth looking because they are super colorful and super pretty. Um, they're personally my favorite animal. Out of all the animals, um, sea slugs are my favorite. I have a sea slug stuffed animal, so that goes to show how much I like them. Um, they are very cool, I think. So when you are tide pooling, you want to be sure to be very careful when touching the animals in the tide pools, um, as they are animals and they can be fragile and you can hurt them. You want to put them back where you found them and you do not want to take them home with you. You do not want to take them out of their home to come to your home because that's not very fair to the animals to take them out of their homes. Um, so what can you do to help the ocean and tide pool animals? First of all, you want to be a beach buddy. You want to pick up things that don't belong on the beach, such as trash. Uh, one way of doing this is to bring your own trash bag with you when you go to the beach or go hiking or boating. This way you can throw away your own trash and pick up any other trash that you find. Um, trash on the beach is a common issue for a lot of marine life. And so picking up trash helps to save a lot of the animals. You also want to reduce, reuse, and recycle in that order. Before you even think about recycling your trash, first you want to reduce the amount of trash that you're using and producing. So you want to produce as little trash as possible. And then the little trash that you do produce, first you want to figure out how to reuse that trash. And then once you have reused it as many times as it can possibly be reused, that is when you recycle it. So that order is very important in order to help the marine animals as much as you can. So thank you for your attention, and as always, please check out our website for additional information on marine environments um, and how you can help, and thank you.